My removable storage situation has been a bit of a mess recently, and it's time to change that. At least now that I have all of my removable storage together, I figured it would be the best time to do a data integrity ritual to help keep my data safe. While it's a good idea to keep these safe from harm, this setup isn't exactly conducive to sitting on my desk and actually being useful. So let's make a better storage holder. I'm going to be 3D printing a customized and modified SD card, micro SD card, and USB stick holder. And it's going to be from Thingiverse, but I'm going to add my own twist to it. Within that, I will be making a 3D model based on the STL I'm given. I'm going to be using multiple slicing operations in Cura, and I'll be modifying G-code for pauses and beeps during the print. And finally, I will be weighing down the print with a filler material. In my case, I'm going to be using sand to fill it, and then it'll cap it on top. So let's get started. To start off with, I of course downloaded this model from Thingiverse, but not just straight away. I customized it in the customizer that's on the page for this 3D model, and I added in enough SD card and USB slots for my liking, and you can add whatever you want to it as far as what it has in its options, like a nameplate or a tiny little dish, all sorts of useful things. But after I got that model downloaded, I took measurements in Mesh Mixer by selecting the Inspect menu and taking measurements of how long and wide the base is. And I did that so I knew how big it was in the model. So I created a simple loft that matches those dimensions within Fusion, and you can use any program to make that model so long as the top portion of the loft is the correct dimension to match up. I opened up the models in Mesh Mixer again so that I could align them so that they would, of course, line up. Whenever you import a model into Mesh Mixer, it aligns the origins. Whenever I move them around and then re-export, it exports a new origin for that model, which is useful in my case because after I import them into Cura, the origins are going to be lined up, and when the origins line up, the models have to line up too. So I moved those models so that they match up, and then after that, I put them into Cura. Now normally, whenever you put things into Cura, there isn't a good way to align multiple models without really joining them, but here's a good way to do it. You have to shift click all your models that you want to align, or just control A to select all of them because we only have two. Right click, merge models, and it'll basically merge the models and make their origins line up, but it will make it be one model, which of course we don't want. So we're going to need to split them up again. But before you do that, you have to make sure that your preferences are set to not automatically drop on the build plate or ensure that they are separate. So you're going to set those settings in the preferences and then you right click and ungroup the models. And if it all went well, you should have two models exactly on top of each other, exactly aligned, but they're separate. And because of that, we can do per model slicing settings. And with that, in my case, you could change all sorts of different things. You can't change layer height, unfortunately, but you can change infill, speed, all sorts of things. So for my model, I set the bottom plate to be a very low infill so I could fill it up with the sand during print, and then the top piece to be slightly higher at about 30%, purely for cosmetics, honestly. Another important slicing setting is to turn off the fan, because if you have it on, it'll just kind of blow sand everywhere. And while sometimes it's good for spreading it out, it kind of is just annoying. One of the reasons I did these separate models and not just have it be one low infill or one high infill part is that I want the sand infill to have a solid layer on top of it. And really the only good way to do that is to have two separate models and then it's sort of like the bottom fill and the top fill of those models act as a cap for the top of the sand filled area. To be honest with this print I probably just could have printed it solid and wasted a bit of plastic to make it heavier instead of filling it with sand, but for a very large print that would have to be heavy, this method can be pretty useful, so long as you're willing to clean up. But nonetheless, we still have a few more edits to make to this G-code. We have to add a beep and a pause so that we can actually fill the sand in the middle of the print. So what I do is I tend to edit the G-code in a program called Repetier Host. It's what my slicing software used to be before I got Cura. 
but I like it because you can see a G-code preview, select layers, and edit the G-code all in one program. So we want to add a few things. The main one is G4. G4 is a dwell command, which means that it will sit there where it left off for a number of milliseconds if you use P, or seconds if you use S. There are a lot of great resources on G-Code on the RepRap Wikipedia page. It's where I got all my information for this mostly. But I set it to dwell for two minutes, so G4 S120, 120 seconds. But we also want it to beep, and that command is M300. S sets the frequency, which doesn't really matter on my printer, it doesn't seem to change anything. And P is the duration in milliseconds, and I set it to be 1000. The way I set it, I had it like beep, dwell, beep, dwell, so it would be like beep multiple times, because if I have a bunch of beep commands, it'll just go all at once and just be one really long beep. Multiple audible signals are generally more useful for things like this. So what I did to the code, I made it move back to 0, zero move the print head out of the way basically. I had it beep a lot so that I would know when it paused. And then I also set it to dwell for two minutes. It'll just sit there and then while I'm filling it up, before it resumes, it will beep a few more times so that I know it's going to be resuming again and I can get it out of the way before it prints again. But one of the other things in here, you have to note your time markings because you can then set a stopwatch on your watch and then you can go down and check on it at the appropriate time. So, now that all of the G-code is done, send it off to the printer. After I choose a color, um, I think I'll go with gray, with a little bit of copper on the top. So now that the print has reached the pause phase, we can fill it with sand. Now, actually, this is like a 50-50 mix sand and salt because I ran out of sand. Salt works just about as well, it's basically just sand, but it dissolves in water. I used one of these little, I don't know what they're called, but it's sort of like a little dispenser thing, and it pours out the sand pretty nicely. Now, I would not recommend doing this if you have a printer that has the y-axis movement with the bed instead of the main carriage, because Whenever you're brushing this stuff off, cleaning it up, it'll basically go off the bed and down onto whatever's underneath it. Now with my printer, there isn't really anything down there, but if you have a Y-axis on your bed with the two linear rails right below the bed, this would destroy your bearings, basically, if you got sand in them. This is a terrible idea if you have a moving bed, because it would also like fling sand everywhere. But because my printer moves like this, I can do this effectively, but I still try to keep it out of the vertical movement systems that are on the bed. So after the print cools, which I actually have to wait, I cannot remove this if it doesn't cool. That's because of my special bed adhesion method, which I'll talk about in a future video. But it removes from the build plate after it cools down to below 27 degrees. One of the last things I did to it was I cut up some old mouse pad rubber after I peeled off the fabric and I glued it to the bottom to add for some grip. But now that it's done, I think that this thing will be very, very useful. It'll probably sit on my desk for a very long time until I get too many SD cards and USB drives to put in it, but maybe at that point I'll just make a second one, because I think that these actually look pretty cool sitting on your desk. They look nice and sleek, but also nice and useful. Information about everything I mentioned will be in the description. You can download this exact 3D model, get started. As always, thanks for watching.